Hi, I'm Taiwa Go. In college, I majored in painting. After I realized that I prefer making things, in graduate school, um, I majored in printmaking. In printmaking, there's a two-dimensional relationship between surface and illusion in the mark making. Uh, I wanted to work more with artwork that can show layers of time and labor and process. I studied studying sculpture in the States and to combine sculpture and printmaking together. As a painter and printmaker, I realized that it's hard to come out from the two-dimensional surface. Since 2016, pushing the boundaries between printmaking and sculpture, so-called print installation, installation using print material, has been one of my focus to make a more dynamic relationship with the viewer. I extended my prints to outside of the frame and related it to architectural elements like pillars, ceilings, or corners of walls. I'm also focusing on contrast between two opposite things, the tension. I'm working in the boundaries between natural phenomena and human realms, such as the industrialized nation civilization. That's why I am doing organic forms. I also incorporate some found of say or decayed pipe or plastic and combining them together. Um, this highlighting the uh, joyful tropical fantasies of landscape opposite to a land invaded by industrialized suburbia. My work looks organic and tropical, but it's also artificial and exaggerated. I use colors like a candy, artificial, very tempting and joyous, but at the same time, very dangerous, even toxic, like the contrast I mentioned. That's why uh, I use a lot of fluorescent color. Sometimes when we see something right before it begins to wither, it is at its best, brightest, and then starts decaying. As an installation artist, pre-maker, and paper sculptor, I do not do the work all together at once. There are some separate phases of my studio practices. The first, I focus on pre-making. For big sculptural pieces, I need hundreds of same prints, so I do screen prints on strong but thin paper such as Korean marble paper or Palin interfacing fabric. Later, for several weeks, I wax the paper to get more translucent effects. I iron sheets of wax onto prints. When you make three-dimensional things, it is important to have double-sided image backside and front side. The next phase is making honeycomb structures. Finally, this is the moment when I can sit down. I glue and hand cut hundreds of prints, filling my studio with scraps of paper. My practice is like a building up the vocabulary to make sentences and phrases. After I made the individual pieces, I combine them all together at the gallery. After show is scheduled, I research the site and try to simulate the installation doing many sketches and trials on my studio wall in Spain. I sketch a lot. At the very beginning of the whole process, I am inspired by medical, biological, scientific illustration books. For example, there's a book called Monstral Realm Historia that shows a lot of different people and animals they had thought were monsters. I keep looking at it because it makes me think about how differently we recognize our bodies over history. Japanese animated science fantasy adventure films such as Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind inspired me to create the installation of flocks of mutant creatures flying over to discover coexistence with the humans. Dr. Seuss's 1971 book, The Lorex, the story about environment also inspired me to do my recent floristry series. 
Floristry was the most popular art subject among traditional artists. It was an art form that inspires contemplation and transcended the decorative and devotional function. Unlike traditional horticulture, uh, flowers are cut and arranged inside rather than outside. Placing floristry in within the home is a symbol for sharing and welcoming. The basic form of flower arrangement had been a um, representation of the age's cultural, social, and religious trends. My recent print installation and small-scale sculptural series, Asymmetrical Floristry, is a symbolic contemporary investigation about the historical, sociological, and psychological influences that have shaped floristry. This project reflects social events and various connections, such as in and out, host and visitor, and naturalness and practicality, along with human desires and limitation of natural phenomena. Human desire have distorted the naturalness of organic grown plants because humans and their honorable guests select only the most beautiful and glorifying plants. This artificial selection resulted in the monstrous, unnatural, and asymmetrical entities that were uh, undistinguishable from its natural cousins in wildlife. This idea is shown in my asymmetrical floristry series. During this quarantine in my home studio, I am developing my recent project rehearsing installation for my upcoming show in summer. I am also experimenting with the space in a domestic environment. I wish you all of you to stay safe and I hope to see you all soon. Thank you.